Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to my lectures. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed about internal diffusional restrictions, IDR, uh, for immobilized enzymes. And we discussed about, uh, about the substrate profile uh, that comes into effect due to IDR in case of spherical geometry and flatbed geometry or uh, membrane geometry. And in today's lecture, we will be discussing about how to determine the intrinsic kinetic parameters of enzyme uh, when we are using porous supports to immobilize our enzymes. So when we use our porous supports, we have the difficult and the big one uh, that is uh, the internal dif uh, diffusion restrictions that comes into play and uh, it makes things um, more complex than the external diffusion restrictions in case of non-porous supports. So for porous supports, <clears throat> finding intrinsic kinetic parameters is a great challenge and uh, we will see that we can approximately or theoretically calculate values for our intrinsic uh, kinetic parameters unlike uh, that uh, we have done in uh, external diffusion restrictions. We performed uh, experiments at high and low concentrations of substrate under good mixing conditions and we evaluated the effect of external diffusion restrictions by uh, using the curve obtained. So, uh, but in the case of uh, internal diffusion restrictions, uh, <clears throat> experimentally three strategies have been proposed in literature and the first strategy is by reducing the particle size of the support, by reducing the particle size of the support on which we are immobilizing. When we reduce the particle size of the support, then the Thiele modulus, which comes into effect in the IDR equation of the substrate profile, the dimensionless equation for IDR, internal diffusion restriction, internal diffusional restriction. So this Thiele modulus is directly proportional to the radius of the particle. So if we reduce the size of the support, thus reduce the size of the particle involved in the support, then we are decreasing Thiele modulus. And when we decrease the uh, size of the, of the support, practically we can imagine that uh, we are increasing the contact area of the support with the bulk medium. So we will be reducing the external diffusion restrictions to a very low level and that will help us in evaluating the effect of IDR on the enzyme kinetics. So uh, this method can be used the, that is the reducing the particle size of the support by reducing the particle size of the support we can determine up to some extent approximate values of the intrinsic kinetic parameters but the major drawbacks that have been <clears throat> argued over this uh, approach is that the, the porous system free of IDR might be impossible to be obtained. That is, when we reduce the size of the uh, particle, then of course we might reduce uh, the IDR to some extent. But we cannot make the system free of IDR because the system is porous and uh, the porosity of the particle, the smaller uh, particles will be less than that of the larger ones, of course, because uh, now we have broken it down into smaller particles, so the pores will also be divided within these smaller particles. So the porosity of a single particle will decrease. But as a whole system, the porosity might be slightly reduced. And the second drawback, the second argument that have been uh, raised on this approach is that the comminuted particle, the shortened part, the, the, break, the broken particles might not truly represent the intact larger particles, their larger counterparts. So uh, the intrinsic kinetic parameter values so obtained are questionable. But that's why uh, I have earlier stated that all these approaches are merely approximation for the intrinsic kinetic parameters. So the second strategy proposed is that uh, we release the enzyme, the immobilized enzyme, we release the immobilized enzyme from the support. That is, 
we de-immobilize the enzyme. Okay, we have immobilized the enzyme in the first place, and now to study the kinetic parameters, we subject the uh, immobilized enzyme to conditions in which the enzyme gets desorbed or it gets released from the immobilized support completely and then we estimate the kinetic parameters of that free enzyme now the concept here is that when we immobilize the enzyme the enzyme might undergo certain structural changes but again if the enzyme is covalently immobilized on the support then that would introduce changes in the enzyme structure to a greater extent extent so this method has been uh, argued that this method uh, cannot be is not suitable for covalently immobilized enzyme but rather this can be used up to some extent this can be the the intrinsic kinetic parameter value so obtained by this method can be uh, nearly used can be said to be nearly accurate or approximately true for those enzymes who which are weakly bonded onto the support that is by using weak interactions because weak interactions will induce a low degree of structural changes and also when we uh, release the enzyme after immobilization then that enzyme might not revert back to its original native structure might not we are not sure about it when we perform experiments and when we study such cases when more such cases appear in literature we will be able to comment over this uh, more precisely but the uh, the those uh, enzymes which are weakly bonded onto the immobilized support they can be of course released from their uh, easily removed from their uh, support and then their kinetic parameters can be studied and we can use those kinetic parameters as the intrinsic kinetic parameters now the third approach is by reducing the protein or enzyme load on the support now this is based on the fact that if we reduce the protein load then a point will come when when the rate of reaction for that immobilized system would depend upon the number of enzymes and it will be more shifted towards a kinetically limited situation than a diffusionally limited situation when the enzyme concentration is high then chances are more that the system is diffusionally the, the system would act as a diffusionally limited system for idea for cases where internal diffusional restrictions are present so when we decrease the load of the enzyme then what will happen the substrate would be reaching the enzyme active site more frequently than the conversion of the product on the active site so the net effect how we will how we will come to know that now our system is kinetically limited when our system will become kinetically limited the immobilized enzyme with the uh, provided protein load or enzyme load will show the michaelis menten or then its natural kinetics will show the curve for that is more closely linked to its natural kinetics more probably most probably the michaelis menten kinetics so the curve will be more like will be more like michaelis menten kinetics rather than a linear curve which will appear in case of diffusionally limited system the system which will be completely diffusionally limited will show more of a linear uh, graph than that of a curve one so as the system will move towards kinetically limited situation the curve would increase and it will reach to a state where it will depict uh, the michaelis menten kinetics of the enzyme so we will choose that protein load and at that conditions at that situation we will see what we are getting about the kinetic parameters so whatever values we will get at that point of the system at that protein load we will use those kinetics uh, kinetic constants as the intrinsic kinetic parameters for the enzyme so again the uh, argument array, uh, that arises from this uh, strategy is that that the kinetic parameters so determined may not represent exactly the kinetic parameters when the protein load is the highest or uh, when we have optimized the immobilization process and we have a maximum protein load over the support so this intrinsic kinetic pa parameter so determined might not re exactly represent the situation when the protein load is higher that is in the normal case 
so again we can say that uh, ultimately uh, this might be near to the intrinsic and uh, intrinsic kinetic parameters of the immobilized enzyme but not yes exactly the same so uh, all these three strategies will uh, lead us to approximate values and on performing all these experiments we must take care of our external diffusion restrictions the external diffusion the effect of external diffusion restrictions should be minimized as minimum as possible for this one uh, strategy is to um, increase the agitation rate or optimize the agitation rate in which uh, to a point uh, at which we get minimum external diffusion restrictions and other parameter like we can uh, decrease the partition effect by using similar type of medium that is uh, the, the the thickness of the thin film is reduced as much as possible by using similar support and medium that is the medium and the support are compatible with each other so that we get a minimum partition layer so uh, and uh, when we get a small partition layer the effect of edr will also be external diffusion restrictions will be also minimized and of course at higher agitation rates the edr will be minimized so uh, at minimized edr we will get precisely the effect of edr uh, idr internal diffusion restrictions on our uh, kinetic parameters so that's all for this lecture and in the next lecture we will discuss about how to determine the diffusional parameters and uh, what uh, what will be the strategies if we want to determine both the intrinsic and the intrinsic kinetic parameters and the diffusional parameters together thank you have a nice day